In this Kubernetes Bootcamp video, I plan to show you how to use Kube Control, which is the command line interface to Kubernetes. As I went through in a previous video, Kube Control is the means by which we send commands to the master so that the master knows what our desired state is and can execute that against the nodes in the cluster. This can be done in two ways. One is through giving direct commands like run and expose, and the other is through applying application descriptions. We'll cover those in more detail in a future video. But first, we want to look at some of the details around Kube Control itself. Kube Control is well documented on the Kubernetes.io website, and the basic syntax to follow is to call the command line, issue a command, and then provide additional details that are relevant to that command. So for example, if we were looking for pods in our Kubernetes cluster, we would call kube control get pod, and we could also give it a pod name if we wanted specific details or were searching for a specific pod. One way to start using kube control is to install it on your local system. This is easy to do by downloading a compatible binary for your chosen operating system. After installing the binary, it's necessary to provide some configuration details so that it knows where your cluster is and perhaps which namespace or username you're using to authenticate. The configuration file is itself a YAML file and can include details about multiple clusters, usernames, and namespace contexts. It's possible to run the kube control client inside of a Docker container. Lachlan Evanson has published a Kubernetes kube control container image, which we'll use for the remainder of this tutorial. With this command, we start a new Docker container based on the Lachlan Evanson kube control container image. We're also mounting the current working directory to a directory slash kube YAML inside that new container. This will be helpful if we have YAML files in the future that we want to be able to execute using the kube control command. You'll notice that if we run a command, like get pods, it says the server doesn't have a resource type pods. This is because we haven't provided any configuration data. So in order to provide configuration data, we want to create a config file. So in our case, a simple configuration file, which points to our master and identifies the default namespace will be sufficient. Now when we say kube control get pods, this communicates with the master and returns the list of pods that are currently running on our Kubernetes cluster. This is one of the most basic commands you can issue in kube control. In fact, you can ask for a number of different types of resources. Calling kube control get without identifying a resource lists out some of the types of resources you can request, including a listing of nodes, a listing of namespaces, existing deployments, and services. You'll notice that some of these, such as services, has a shorthand notation, SVC, which means you can run kube control get SVC, and this will return all of your services. And that is identical to running get services. It's also possible to ask kube control to give you information about the cluster. So that's the end of this short introduction to using kube control to access your Kubernetes cluster.